And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to introduce to you the investigative journalist and the host of the Steel Truth Show. It's Anne pick a, pick a, pick a, pick a, Vander Steel. There she is, Miss America. Something more than bread. Good afternoon, Dallas. It's so great to be back in Texas. Woo! I am so excited to be here with you and impart what I have gone as a journey called Becoming an American State National. Next slide. Go ahead, Devin, please. Y'all, we've just now, you've been hearing about this, the greatest crime in political history you all have witnessed. It's a big deal. But President Trump does talk about the best is yet to come. Well, let's explore what he means by that. Go ahead, Devin. I'm going to give you a little quick history lesson, and this is what President Trump talks about, the super elite. Well, we the people, by the way, we're the supremes, okay? We are above it all, but God is still way above us. He gives us our rights, not the government. Your rights belong to you, the individual, the free people out there. They're unalienable. And that's for a conversation for another day, the way I pronounce that word, by the way. Gifts from our creator. Your government can't take away your rights, but what they do issue are privileges. We're a republic. We're not a democracy. Right? Are we a republic? Are we meant to be free? Stand up if you want to be free. Let's go. Come on, people. Feel it. Woo! That's what I'm talking about. That's my America right here. You, the free people. You know this. Come on, Devin. Let's keep rolling here. The American people, we are not the problem. It's the out-of-control government. And I want to go to the next slide because I want to explain what the problem is. It's these people right here, the administrative state, otherwise known as the deep state. Guess what? These deep staters are showing you who they are. We're seeing them with Fauci, with the CDC, with the FDA, with the NIH, with the military industrial complex. Newsflash, I got a phone call today from my husband who's back home taking care of the fam. His, his son, my stepson, is with the 2nd Cavalry U.S. Army commissioned officer. Thank you. Wonderful gentleman, his name is William, and he's stationed in Germany. Guess what he just got told today? Russia, Russia, Russia. They have all been brought into base, and they're being told they're going to be on base for two weeks, and if Putin goes to Ukraine, they're sending them in as the strike force for NATO. And guess what they were told? Don't expect to make it back. Now, okay, this is, believe me, I'm, I'm hours old hearing this news. It's horrible, but it goes right back to what we're talking about. This administrative state, thanks to President Roosevelt, the Federal Register Act of 1935 was signed by executive order and it allowed him, so he thinks, to create administrative agencies. And by those, he put agency heads, giving them the ability to write law. Well, it's not law. Those are not law. They're statutory regulations. And we are a nation of laws, are we not? We become lawless. We are a nation of disorder and lawlessness. This is horrific. He did not, President Roosevelt, and every president since then, has been able to give these agencies the statutory ability to rule you, hence the CDC and their doctrine of killing you when you're in a hospital with, with regulations and protocols that are designed to do exactly that. Next slide, please. It all started at the Civil War. Today's 13th Amendment talks about ending slavery. And you have to look at the language where it says, neither slavery nor involuntary servitude except as punishment for a crime whereof the party shall have been duly convicted shall exist within the United States or any place subject to their jurisdiction. Slavery is involuntary servitude. Were they leaving the way for voluntary servitude? Hence, you signing your 1040 and paying taxes to fund the administrative state. Next slide, please. 
Here's the missing original 13th Amendment. In 1809, pay attention, folks. This is important right here. If any citizen of the United States shall accept, claim, receive, or retain any title of nobility or honor, or shall without the consent of Congress accept and retain any present pension office, blah, 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 I'm going to finish the sentence where it says, such person shall cease to be a citizen of the United States and shall be incapable of holding any office of trust or profit under either of them. Next, please. Translated, titles of nobility means anything like squire or esquire. Hmm, esquire. Can anybody tell me what's an esquire? Lawyers, law sayers, attorneys. What do we have running around Congress? <laughs> we don't have truth sayers. We have attorneys and lawyers running around. If you read what I just read to you with the original 13th Amendment that was replaced by this, you now know we were never supposed to have lawyers and attorneys running into in serving us in government. Next slide, please. The 14th Amendment. This word says all persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and the state in wherein they reside. No state shall make or enforce any law which shall abrid the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor deny any person with its jurisdiction the equal protection of laws. Go to the next slide, please. In this case right here in 1873, U.S. First and Anthony, it defines the term resident and citizen of the 14th United States as being distinguished from the citizen of one of several states, meaning a state national, which I talk about, is a different class of citizen than a federal citizen. And a federal citizen means you're subject to the federal government, i.e. statutory regulations, the administrative state. You are, you are basically exchanging your rights given to you by God for privileges given to you by the federal government. Next slide, please. I'm going to skip this next one, please. Okay, the United States versus the United States of America basically says the 14th Amendment used to bring the, bring the majority of the population, population of citizens under federal jurisdiction. When you go under federal jurisdiction, next slide, please. Next slide, please. Right here, look at the difference here. U.S. citizen versus American citizen or a state citizen. If you're a federal citizen, you have privileges and liabilities, social security, welfare, student loans. These are privileges in exchange for the liabilities to fund them, and we know that we're bankrupt trying to fund these liabilities. If you're a free people, in our Constitution, nowhere did it say social security, Medicare, all these things are in there. Medical assistance was not a right as defined by our, by our Constitution. These are privileges, and we've been funding all of them with a corrupt administrative state. Look at all these agencies that have been stood up. None of them are listed in your Constitution. I implore everybody to get a copy. Next slide, please. The Congressional Act of 1871 created the United States District of Columbia or United States. This is the federal corporation of the United States. It's supposed to be in that 10 square miles that now reaches out, out to Guam, Wake Island, Puerto Rico. Well, they've now incorporated all of us, making us all federal citizens. And how does that happen? When you're born and you're issued a Social Security number and your parents sign an SS-5 and you take Social Security, you have now said, I am opting in to that system. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. I, wanna, I know I'm running out of time here. This is very interesting. This case, 1970, Brady versus, 19, versus United States. Waivers of constitutional rights not only must be voluntary, but must be knowing. Intelligent acts done with sufficient awareness of relevant circumstances and likely consequences. Did any of you realize when you sign up for Social Security that you're basically waiving your, all of your rights? Did you understand that you become a federal citizen? It's different than ha actually being a free people. Are you all w voluntarily signing your 1040 and paying taxes? Well, that's what you're doing if you're a federal citizen. Next slide, please. Does anybody remember President Trump this past summer? He was at CPAC here in, I think it was in Dallas, as a matter of fact, July 9th. 
He said, we will take back the House, we will take back the Senate, and then after witnessing all that has gone wrong in our country in such a short period of time with our borders, our economy, our crime, we will take back that glorious White House that sits so majestically in our nation's capital, that beautiful White House. That's small letters, White House. The beautiful White House, the most beautiful house of them all. When you're a corporation, look at your driver's license, your passport, anything that has your name on it, it's all capital letters. Corporate documents are always all capital letters. When you're a free people, nah. -uh. President Trump is talking about this exact thing right here. Next slide, please. For those in the FBI or any other administrative agency that has a target on me and the TSA strip searches me every time I fly, every gate I'm at, they go through every bag every single time. It costs me precious hours to travel and I do it because I love our country and I love you and I wanna be here. I'm here to tell you, I am not calling for an insurrection. I'm calling for a resurrection of our founding fathers documents and I'm asking all of you to join me in this fight. Let's go, let's go. That's right, feel it, you guys, feel it. This is your freedom. Let's feel the freedom. We are free people again. And while we're marching on this journey, next slide please, I'm gonna show you, if you want some resources, grab your phones and take a picture of this because these two gentlemen right here, David Strait, worked for President Trump as the Commissioner for Child Sex Trafficking during the Trump administration, and Bobby Lawrence, that telegram right there, that room, or that website, are your two go-to places that you're gonna wanna to dive into if you wanna learn more, and there's a lot more to this. But in the meantime, Steel Truth is boots on the ground. We go everywhere, we go where the action is, we go where the story is. We wanna do this for you to continue to tell you the truth. And on that note, I'm gonna leave you with this video about where I've been so that you all hopefully will invite me to come and visit you. I appreciate your time this evening. Have a great day, love you guys. One more time, folks, let's hear for Ann Vandersteel. How many of you flew to uh, get here? How many of you flew to get here? I shouldn't have done this, but I did this recently. My wife probably is still a little bit frustrated with me, but uh, I was getting one of those pat-downs. You know, have you ever got an aggressive pat-down where they're checking you? And I looked at the guy right in the eyes, and I said, thank you, more please. And it didn't, it didn't go well. So that's not a pro tip, but it is... It was kind of funny because he wasn't sure what to do. And he's, you know, doing where he's patting down with the back side of the hand. And he's just like, okay. Okay. <laughs> so, I don't know. That's, that's probably not healthy. But that was what happened. Okay. Whoa. All right. Now, ladies and gentlemen.